All right, just want to kind of review a book that I've been reading. It's called Entering Her Vortex, The Healing Masculine Feminine Dynamic in Relationships Using the Law of Divine Magnetism by Jacal L. Nike. No, it's not, it seems commercially available. It's not advertised. And I ordered it, and it came from the States. It's dedicated to the reclamation of divine energy on the planet that leads to the ultimate union of mother, father, child, and community. Holy Trinity, some might call that. That which has been the target of destruction. So, basically it relates to reclaiming as a man your divine masculine purpose which is defined a divine female so you're both in that masculine feminine divine harmony and then together creation create a child and that collectively becomes the community becomes the world so i'm just going to give you a few things I found interesting in this book and I'll give you a conclusion right. but I marked off certain areas it says men are the backbone of the world men are here to be the stability and the foundation of certainty in times of change and uncertainty divine masculine man so DMM divine masculine man has to carry the slack for wounded masculine men WMM. Now, we've all been wounded. The divine masculine man, the way intended, has been wounded in many ways. The divine feminine, the way woman, the way intended, has been wounded. And when even if you have a divine feminine who has a wounded masculine, there's no alignment. And vice versa so the unity has to be divine masculine that's in balance with himself meets divine feminine and then creation and then collectively as a community that's how the world was intended of course that was massively fucked with but there's still a lot of lessons to learn from this all things are born from the feminine the masculine is a manifestation of gestated feminine energy Feminine energy is stillness. Masculine energy is animated. Feminine energy is oneness. Masculine energy is separateness. This yin and yang is what keeps our world in sync and or out of sync. It's just like with the masculine, there is a divine feminine state and a wounded feminine state. When feminine energy is in its highest divine status, it is a clear vessel for the divine to shine through. The feminine is more about the internal world. The masculine is more about the external world. So the idea of left and brain, the idea of male and female, left, right, side, brain, harmony in any sync, is that we have the outwardly go, get, do of the man with the inwardly thought out and cared about of the feminine. And we all know that we've been pushed into the masculine left brain dominant go get don't care has been inserted into that and the more that they pile shit on top of shit there are those amongst us that have this realization that this feminine part this compassionate part is massively needed and has been missing Divine masculine men resonate with divine feminine women. In relation to men, what can we do to get back or reclaim our state of divine masculine? How can we heal? How can we fix ourselves so that we may be of worth? So that we, we may be of worth to a, a, a worthy divine feminine in order to 
create the divine? How do we reclaim our divine masculine purpose? So maybe I'm coming into my understanding of divine masculine and balance of the feminine later in my life. And I'm still on the journey. But it's always been within me. I've always been conscious of that. Feminine counterpart to that masculinity. I've always been very conscious of that. I've always understood it. It's not always been possible to live it for me for... I didn't know what was truly required in order to live it fully. So I have, all of my children are beautiful, all of them, and I have children to different mothers, and the oldest is 36, the youngest is 15, and they are all, to me, divine. The relationship in which they were born to this world. I was pretty far removed from a divine masculine man. I was born. And I think it's fair to say that the person I was with was possibly less not divine in terms of her perfect balance thing. It was wounding. We've all been wounded. And perhaps perseverance with that produced trinity of having children and then knowing that the importance of the Holy Trinity is the divine balance, then the ideal unity could be salvaged, but we've all been fucked with. There is so much damage to be repaired at this time, and it will take a future generation, what we've all needed, to find that balance and to live that fully. It's been taken away from us, particularly this current generation. Maybe the divine creation. So understand again. The idea of the divine masculine is that you are in complete balance of you. First thing you've got to get right is you. Before you're even worthy to look for your feminine counterpart. So balance would be you are in left right brain harmony. You are in perfect divine balance between the masculine and the feminine. How many men do you know like that? Like I say, that's been messed with. But that's the only thing. And there's something about that the, the divine feminine is in the perfect balance and harmony of her masculine and feminine traits. And the two meet, they harmonize. So the idea of the divine masculine is to create a safe, provided for environment for his divine feminine to do what she does best, create, and to do so safely with full natural expression, where she can be totally herself, safely, and she will protect her and provide for her. Well, that got fucked with and inverted. You know, the creation of, of a more of an attitude of I don't need a man to support me. I don't need a man to look after me. It's not meant that way. It's not meant in a controlling sense. It's meant that you are, as the sacred feminine, so important. I must create an environment for you where you can thrive and do what you need to do. There's nothing controlling or needy about it. It's, it's worship of the sacred feminine. And that was destroyed and fucked with, as we know. But... If those two found each other, then the what they create is divine creation. You know, the child, the Holy Trinity, mother, father, child. And that collectively creates the community, the divine community. And of course, you can see where this is all gone. And this book offers an insight in how to possibly get an understanding of where it went wrong. Potentially what you can do about it now. I mean, now at my time of life, I mean that I've had 
my children are grown up. My youngest is 15, my oldest is 36. Boys and girls. And they're beautiful and I love them. And they have gone on to have children of their own, which is good. I, like many, never had that divine unity or never understood what was necessary to upkeep and maintain it to get the very best of it. So, maybe the divine creation among collective communities in the future is to come about through, first of all, what's left of this generation, striving to educate the next, or leave messages, that creates the importance of this understanding. So maybe the divine creation among us all as a collective, the way things were meant to be, <laughs> comes in the form of some of us now, seeking to educate future generations to the importance of this planting seeds now then such divine creation and balance of male and female masculine feminine energy will manifest in the form of men and women to understand it and choose to live it in action there is so much damage to be repaired, men and women, in masculine, feminine, particularly this generation. It will take a future generation, as this one goes, to bring it back to its intended fruition. And so the seed is planted. We are all ant workers. that will gradually influence future generations towards a better way. Just look at the collective of an ant colony. I remember as a kid seeing this rock, about the size of my hand now, it was moving. And it was hundreds of ants underneath, lifting it as a colony in unison. <laughs> That's a shapeshift. That's the way we were intended. Divine communities working with each other to create a more beautiful ecosystem, not a savage ecosystem. So, I'll just give you a few excerpts of this book. Really, what I wanted to give out in this clip was how can we? reclaim our divine masculine purpose well the man supposedly leads as i speak about these things you'll see all of these things that are not present now and you'll see all of these things that have been inverted in order to be present now let's start first with the role of the man as he is the leader of the family unit as we have mentioned before, all humans contain both masculine and feminine energy. So why does the man lead if women have masculine energy too? The difference is found in the devised divine polarization. Remember, feminine is the flow. Masculine is the form. Feminine is the flow, is the creation. Formation of Wonderful ideas. Masculine is the form, the driving force that puts those ideas into action. You can consider feminine, feminine energy as the spiritual DNA of a person. You can consider feminine energy as the spiritual DNA of a person, whereas the masculine energy is the material manifestation of that DNA. A man's spiritual DNA feminine energy creates a masculine polarization making him the master 
of his material realm. Masculine energy is not void of feminine energy, it is merely a manifestation of it. So in order for a man to be walking in his divine masculine energy, he must be attuned to his feminine energy as it reveals his purpose. This is what allows man to master his material reality and become a leader of the family unit. Man here is to bring life to his purpose in a way that will allow material production. If he is following his higher self, he will walk in a path that develops his skill set, character, discipline, confidence and overall productivity. This all requires a man to be living out his true masculine form. The problem with men and modern men is that they do not follow their purpose. They lack discipline and focus. They are distracted by worldly ideas of what it means to be a man. They pursue sex, women and entertainment before they deserve either of the three. In order to be a fit family, a man must develop stability in his own life. This stability allows him to lead, protect and provide for the family. A man who has truly mastery the self. The man who is truly a master of himself does not seek to bring the woman into his energy field unless she is aligned with his purpose and worthy of his devotion. An unstable man, be it financially, spiritually or character-wise, mentally or emotionally, will cause instability in a woman's life. This chaos comes from the imbalance of feminine energy. It is unbalanced energy because he is working against the true nature of his higher self. This causes friction in the mind and ultimately leads to lack of confidence in his ability to produce and create. Lack of confidence leads to a lower and lower feminine vibration which places the man in a wounded feminine state which manifests itself as wounded masculine man. This type of man always has excuses as if it's not in his control of his material reality. He has lost his power because he is acting against himself. True spiritual confidence comes from following your spiritual purpose as it is a man's guiding light. It is an integral compass that all men must follow else they fall victim to their lower self. This compass is the center of a man's life. As he brings himself closer to it, he becomes more attuned to the frequency, his feminine energy that inspires him from within. This attunement strengthens and reinforces the magnetism of purpose. Things begin to flow in his life with a greater sense of ease. But he mustn't fall victim to this. There's a saying, hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And it's certainly true if man allows the pendulum in his life to sway too far during good times. As long as you are on earth, man should act and live as if we are either in or headed towards hard times. As leader of the family unit, he must be prepared for the worst. This is why man should not blindly pursue women, sex and sexual energy is where man derives his material strength. It is a manifesting energy. And a man who has not properly used energy to create a stable spiritual, mental, emotional and material life should not be exchanging his energy with a woman. He should be learning how to get more in tune with self so that he can be a legitimate so that he can be a legitimate leader of the family life. A man is supposed to be the leader of the family unit, the ruler of his own material plane. So, just read you this quick. Just read you some highlights from this chapter. The Divine Masculine. Divine Masculine men move with spiritual purpose, intention, focus and discipline. They are productive citizens who add value to their families, communities and societies as a whole. They uplift, protect and provide for their women. They are inspired by the Divine Feminine to build. They don't make excuses. They understand that they must accumulate and effectively manage resources. They are not afraid of war or competition but understand the importance of peace and collaboration. They are leaders in their own right but they understand the function and the hierarchy of the following order. They are lifelong learners and they leave an impact wherever they go. In this era and current cultural climate these men seem few and far between. But we will begin training up the new leaders 
to reclaim their role as men. It's not easy, but it's not supposed to be easy being a man. It is, however, extremely simple. Having focus, discipline, integrity, leadership, maturity, and provision are not complex concepts for a man to uphold. Yet due to generations of societal and cultural misalignment, we have a vast amount of men who resent the resp responsibility of being a man, while still wanting all the benefits of being a man. He wants to judge without uplifting. He wants to lead without direction. He wants to possess without building. This isn't the 1920s anymore. They say, which is code for, I want my wife to be half of the man for me. But she also has to be all of the woman. <laughs> this is an unbalanced equation. Men cannot handle the role of being a woman. Her body prepares to bring life into this world. Each month, she protects, carries and nurtures your seed for eight to ten months and then raises that child to become the highest reflection of you. And to them, we say, I will not provide for you, I will not marry you, I will not lead you, but I will fuck you and I will get you pregnant and we'll figure it out as we go on with no plan because I'm a man that lacks intention. This is why our communities are degrading. The masculine energy of our society is weak. There is no real structure, order or discipline. Yet many want to push women to be more masculine instead of providing the masculine support needed to honour, uplift, protect their feminine essence. And then we go deeper. There is a dark layer of self-doubt and a lack of self-worth amongst men and women that enables this cycle to continue. He doesn't feel confident that he is able to develop himself further to become a leader and a provider. He doesn't trust in his ability to plan or he is disciplined to follow through. But he performs this pseudo-masculine image and bravado so well that she doesn't know that he feels uncertain about his life's direction. She doesn't think he's going to leave after she gets pregnant because she never thought about getting pregnant. She wasn't thinking like a divine feminine woman and prioritising the protection of her womb. She's not confident enough in herself not to not fold on her standards for herself and her life. Everybody wants sex and companionship without preparing to be a husband or a wife. So they naturally engage with people from a place of lack. Everyone is just using one another to fill in emotional voids. Exchanging energy with people they would never consider had they been in a high vibration and thinking with due diligence. Is this the person I want to spend the rest of my life with spiritually, emotionally, mentally and financially? The, short, the need for short-term gratification is a temptation that most cannot resist due to the lack of self-discipline. But rewards without responsibility bring nothing but delayed consequences. What's that going on? Yeah, all right, all right. So it says, men are here to be the stability and the foundation of certainty in times of change and uncertainty. In the main, in the majority. That's not what we are as men, is it?